Go ahead and be up front, because here's the juicy part, right? The Doug's headers cost nothing. We're getting started removing the Doug's headers because we plan to install the new speed engineering headers. But uh, first, I think I'm gonna go through the torture of removing these guys. And the best part is you're good to come along and see how this process happens. All right, and oh, man, I love headers. I love working on my headers. I love having the opportunity to work on my headers. <laughs> trying to stay positive here anyways um the headers are a pain in the butt if if i were to pick one task i'd rather well like i said i have to pull the headers off to pull an engine transmission but the the whole effort of taking these headers out is such a pain pain in the butt whenever it comes to like the other chassis like the s197s new edge um, the S550s, I think they're also a pain in the butt, but they're a little bit different, right? But this thing, you can't drop the cross member out. It's welded to the frame rails on the front. So you're snaking this in, you're trying to squeeze your little, your little, little fingers like this to get, you know, hardware loosened up. So yeah. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go over the tool list, the wrench sizes, and things like that uh, that, you'll, that I will need for my car to take these headers off. I think there's, it's concerning that I even know this, like offhand. I didn't even, we haven't even got started. I just pulled all this stuff because I knew exactly what I'm going to need. Because <laughs> I've done this too many times. Anyways, so first order of business. We're going to remove the battery stud that takes two 13 millimeter wrenches. We'll go ahead and do that. Um, the next thing is actually this guy. This is going to take the starter off. Basically, I'll need a, you know, this is not, it's not super tight on there, but we'll need a 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter, and an extension to get some of the bolts. It's usually not hard to access that. Next will be, this is for the steering rack um i know it's a 15 16th bolt on a piece of garbage and i don't feel like figuring out what the other size of the nut on the back is so i use an adjustable wrench and then right here this is what's going to be taking apart the um steering shaft from the steering column to uh to, to the rack so yeah and then oh this guy, this is what takes off the headers. Basically, a 15 millimeter for the few head studs that I have still left on there that kind of hold everything in place for me. And then a 3 8 Now, I got two different size wrenches because one is swiveling, one is fixed. All right, battery in the truck. Bow, 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 round key. Oh, put that guy up. Will it stay up? Let me. Already got dirty. All right, where's the. All right. So since the battery is going to be disconnected, I think it's safe to keep these guys right there on the dash that way. So, two 13 millimeter wrenches. There we go. All right, battery disconnected. Let's go take off the starter. So, starter is a pretty simple one. It's going to be pretty dark, but for the most part, it's a, you probably can't even see this, but you get the 10 millimeter for the signal wire, 13 millimeter for the power, and then it's three 13 millimeter bolts. starter route 
All right, guess what's next? Steering rack. Yeah, all I gotta say is, if you say, hey Brian, come help me do headers, I'm gonna say no, okay? Just understand that. I'm, I'm gonna say no. Look, the, the adjustable wrench is already at the desired size. All right, next is the steering column. So, we'll need our half inch sockets, we'll need our baby ratchet. Mm, depending on axis, might need a wrench. We definitely will need Allen keys. So, so I th again, this is gonna be kind of dark, but there is a pin that you gotta pull out on top of a set screw on top. So that thing don't come out unless both are kind of taken care of. So before I take this off, I'm gonna definitely show you guys. So there's the clearancing because the steering shaft is still in. You'll, you see that below, but you, you'll see the denting of that primary tube, this outside primary tube. Um, and it looks like we did a little bit there as well. However, it doesn't look like it's quite as needed. I mean, that one's pretty, pretty good smashed, but I don't think it's necessary, but it is right here though, because it's tight. That one's probably on the next go around. We don't do that again. So just keep going to work since we have the pin removed. If I shift the steering rack forward, then this should, should come out. It's almost there. Oh, shit. <laughs> See? I told you. Okay, so now we just got to get that top part. Right there. That's the guy. Shouldn't be anything holding that thing. Oh, there we go. Boom! Ta-da! So, I know it was dark under there and you guys couldn't really see exactly what I was taking off, but... So, for... This is what attached to the steering rack side. So, you have this guy right here, which is going to be a little uh, bolt that presses down and prevents it from coming out. And then the uh, the, the little input shaft of the rack has a little cutaway on the input shaft where you slide this bolt through and this won't come out on the bottom at all. Now the top part is a little simpler. It just has that one stud that goes down and bites down onto uh, a little cutaway on the output of the uh, steering column. So that's how this stays in. Not only that, if these were unbolted, I cut this size right here to length to where if the rack is bolted in and the steering column is bolted in, this isn't coming out. So, first thing we'll try to get off is these 15 millimeter, um, I guess you could say nuts that are on the studs. Uh, that'll be the first one I try to get off, which is, there's one at the front. I think there's one in the front. Maybe two in the front. Let's see. Or here, there's one. Two. There's two on the passenger side. Um, but there's only one. One over here. So, passenger side has three studs, got those off, but I only got one off over here. There's two of them over here. That means I have to get under the car to get that last one. So now, we got a bunch of them that are 3 8 size that we need to go ahead and take off. And that's pretty much going to get them, get pull these headers off the car. That's the, the last, last step for both sides. <sighs> Got it. 
Okay. Whew. There we go. Okay. So I think we this is what's happening, right? So I did everything I could to get these guys to seal up. As you can tell. I put a ton of orange RTV on there. I did as much as I could. You can see that this is now separate, right? So it would make each cylinder independent of the flange or, or, or from another cylinder. So it would give it its best chance to bolt down and seal up, right? These raised pieces, I think I've... I think that's the culprit, right? Because it's letting go. It, it's just not. It's not sealing. It's not sealing at all. Like right here, feels like it was completely clear. So when I go pull this cylinder's uh, gasket, which I'm about to real quick, <laughs> and real quick in, in a little bit, um, I bet you we're gonna find that this guy right here, it's leaking right through there. All right, so I just got this pulled off. Now, keep in mind, I just want you guys to know, I'm not using some cheap gasket. That is the Famoco, basically the same gasket I'm gonna, I'm gonna use. It's a high quality gasket. Now look at all these cylinders, right? Hmm, why does that one look black and burned? Because it's leaking. It's leaking off that guy. Cause this is how, this is how it went. Off the, off the motor it's it's this cylinder this this one is leaking this I got our O2 sensor off put that nice and thick right there because we're, we're gonna reuse that guy so come with me let's pull off let's pull off this uh oh damn it I forgot I gotta take the down I gotta unbolt that header first yeah, so this is the tough part that I was kind of talking about. So, I just don't have enough room. Um, I don't have enough room to drop the header off of the studs that I have it hanging on. So, if you get a six millimeter ratchet, uh, this is the right size to remove the studs. So I'm gonna try and remove the two front ones and we'll see if that allows us enough to get rid of that, uh, or get the, the back one off. So there's the end of one of them. And as you can see, it's a, it's a good fit. I need to buy some more lens protectors because if I put your head on, you see the little... I'm not excited for this next part because I have to probably unbolt the motor mount, get a jack, or my, yeah, my little jack over there, and lift up the damn motor to get this header off. I got the header off. I kind of undo everything. I'm going to show you what I had to do to get this header off. Not a fun time, not a good time, but it fucking works. Also, as you see, that's the motor mount. It is loosened, and I've raised the engine by the bell housing. And uh, I'm about to set this thing back down and tighten those engine mounts back up. So, <clears throat> comparatively, um, this side, passenger side, actually looks pretty good. Nothing like a dark green circle like that one, though. All right, so I am for sure done with this for the day. I have the headers off the car. I've scraped off all the 
you know, orange copper RTV that I put on there. And I have want to go over the old headers versus the new headers with you because there is astonishing similarities that I would like to uh, point out. So obviously I have two sets of headers, so there's four, the driver's side and passenger side. And one set is by Doug's headers and the other is by Speed Engineering. Now, to go ahead and be up front, because here's the juicy part, right? The Doug's headers cost $942, whereas the Speed Engineering headers cost $350, that's their base price. Now, I, on a previous video, I did discuss, you know, the price that they're $350 plus. I paid a little extra for them to supply me the uh, the V-band clamp and the flange. So, you know, it, it's, uh, even with options, they're way cheaper than the Doug's headers. And now that I was thinking about getting a new set of headers, I'm scratching my head thinking, damn, there goes another, you know, almost thousand bucks on another set of headers. But in actuality, there's these guys, which, yeah, so first off, you know, I got my tin you know, foil hat on. These look like they were made in practically the same, by at least designed by the same company because they are crazy similar. All the routing is the same. The bins are the same. The welds and the bins are in the same location they're, they're, they're like i don't know like you it's it, it's be very difficult for you to tell me that they're not made in the same factory but then swapped with a few components because yes there is a, a little bit of difference right and that could that difference could just be that these are made of stainless steel and these are made of mild steel right so you can tell of like the shape of the flange. You see how this kind of has like a little triangle? And then if you look at these guys, that's more of a rounded. So the flange, those are obviously a little different. Um, the O2 bunks, they look, they look a little different. Now, again, like I'm saying, I mean, this being mild steel, this being stainless steel, you look at the collector, this collector is a little shorter than this merge collector right here. So keeping that in mind as well. Now, when you buy a Doug's headers, they come with these V-band flanges already welded to the collector. Whereas, you know, Speed Engineering, they kind of leave that up to you, right? You either option the supply of one of theirs or you supply your own and, uh, but either way, you definitely have to, you know, the user has to weld on their, uh, connection that they plan to use to connect to their exhaust. Um, something else. So they, Doug Siders do give you the additional O2 port, which is close to the factory location and speed engineering does not. But then again, if you have a long tube header, why not? Just, just put the O2 sensor at the collector. Like, like that would be, that would, you know, that's one of the, that's one of the huge benefits of going to an aftermarket collector is you get the sample from all four cylinders instead of the one, right? Um, let's see what, what else? Oh, let's let's look at the flanges. So, because this is where I'm having an issue with. The Doug's header is kind of leaking. Well, these guys are kind of like a raised, like the port is raised up. So this is what basically cinches down on your gasket. But I mean, if you think about it, if you mess this up, which I think on that one, I, I, I did mess it up, uh, or it's warped or something. It's not, it, it, I think it's warped and just didn't held up to the abuse and occasional racing that I did with it. But I think that's part of the issue of why these are leaking and they don't really seal as well. But anyways, nonetheless, I've got brand new and these are flat, completely flat. 
So I feel like this is going to, one, because they're new, they're going to seal up, but they're going to seal up better and longer. And then because it's a stainless steel, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure the stainless steel uh, is is more resistant and more tolerable for, for, for taking heat. So, or I feel like I'm making uh, the change for the better. And for, for one, quality in the material, quality in the header, um, uh, a heck of a better price for sure. So, being that they're routed practically identically to to one another, that means the installation is going to be the exact same way. So, as you saw me remove the headers, for the most part, the steering rack has to be disconnected. The steering linkage has to be removed. The starter's got to be taken off. The engine mounts have to be loosened. Engine needs to be raised to get the passenger side installed. And also there was a little massaging done to the Doug's headers in order for it to clear the frame rail on the passenger side and the steering linkage on the driver's side. However, this go around, I think we're going to do this a little bit with a little bit more finesse to it, right? So it looks a little bit better and we're only massaging what we need. I think I went a little excessive on the Doug's header. So that's it. I'm gonna call it a night um, for basically the removal of the Doug's and the comparison between the old and the new, the Doug's and the speed engineering headers. And I will see you guys later for the install of the new headers, which like I said, uh, I will document it, I will video it, but I have a pretty good idea. It's gonna be very, very similar and you'll be able to see me, one, weld up the flange, do the massaging, and then basically install it. So I appreciate it, hit, hit a like button, uh, provide your comments below as what you think about, hey, why do Doug's headers cost $900 and speed and engineering headers only cost 350 and they're stainless steel? Like, help me make sense of that, if not, let me know if you have any other comments about the, the uninstallation of every of anything or if you have questions about any of the products, tools uh, that I have in the video. You can hit me up in the comment section. I'm, I'm reading all of them. So I appreciate it. If this is your first time here, why don't you think about subscribing? I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys later.